Welcome to Oakleaf Cakes Bake Shop. My name is Amanda. Today we're going to be making our marshmallow fondant. Marshmallow fondant is what we use on all of our custom cakes. It goes on the outside and we use it for cutouts and sugar flowers and all the decorations. Um, and it tastes great as long as you like marshmallows. And it's a little bit messy, but I will show you how to do it. So for marshmallow fondant, basically all we do is melt some mini marshmallows with some water in the microwave, and then we're gonna sift in some powdered sugar and some gum tragacanth. Um, on the recipe, gum tragacanth is an optional ingredient. If you're making it in small batches and you're just gonna be decorating some small, like single tier cakes or making um, cupcake toppers or some simple decorations, you can probably go without the gum tragacanth. Um, you can also find some other gums, like gum arabic or, not gum arabic, <laughs> that would be for painting. Um, what's the other one? Xanthan gum. Um, but gum, uh, gum tragacanth we found works the best. And what you'll do is you'll sift it in and it allows some more elasticity in your fondant. Uh, so for decorating really big cakes or tiered cakes or especially sculpted cakes, uh, the gum keeps it from ripping and it allows the, the fondant to stretch a little more. So first thing we want to do, you want to melt the marshmallows and the mini marshmallows. You want to melt those with some water in the microwave. So you want to melt your mini marshmallows with water in the microwave. And fondant could be made with some science experiment melting of like some gelatin and glucose and all the extra ingredients. but. All of those are already in marshmallows, and marshmallows already have a taste everybody really likes. So we're just gonna start with that. So a quarter cup of water and one pound of marshmallows. So that can go in the microwave. So that was about a minute in the microwave. And it's starting to melt, and we have a little bit of um, full marshmallows on the edges. We're just gonna give it a good stir just to get some more of the water mixed in so that melts a little smoother. We'll give it another 20 seconds or so just to make sure all of those marshmallow pieces are fully melted. Okay. So now everything's pretty well melted. Give it a stir, make sure all that water is mixed in. Now what we're gonna do, that we, now that we have melted marshmallows, let's go ahead and sift in our sugar. So we have powdered sugar, we have eight cups measured. Um, again, depending, kind of like we're all I seen, depending, depending on the humidity in the room or exactly how much water you put in, you may need more or less. Um, eight cups is pretty close, so we're gonna go ahead and put all that in. Um, what you wanna do is make sure that you've sift in the gum tragacanth sooner rather than later to make sure you get that all in for sure, just in case you don't use all that sugar. So we have our sifter, we have our sugar, fill that up. You want to definitely sift the sugar into the marshmallows. Um, that does two things. It, like I said, mixes in the gum tragacanth nice and uh, consistently, but it also gets rid of those lumps that sometimes happen in the powdered sugar different brands, different amounts, different humidity days, different amounts of lumps. So sifting definitely is something you want to do and not skimp on. The gum tragacanth you want to do just under a half tablespoon for this size batch. And like I said, it is optional if you want to leave it out, if you can't find it, we just order it online. But if you're planning on making a tiered cake or a sculpted cake or something that's, you know, where the fondant's going to stretch a lot, uh, this will definitely help the fondant be more elastic. That's in. That's probably about halfway. We can give it a stir. And at some point, this is going to form into... Uh, a stiff dough and at that point it'll be kind of tough to stir and at that point so many points 
After it's a more of a stiff dough, we're gonna turn it out onto the table and knead it by hand to get the last amount of sugar in there. Okay, and we'll sift the rest of the sugar in there. Okay, and you can see that our Melted marshmallows have absorbed a lot of the sugar and it's getting to be a little stiffer. I'm just gonna keep stirring as long as I can in the bowl before I turn it out onto the table. That'll be easier to work with if it's more of a dough and less of a, a melty blob. So this is getting a lot stiffer, you can see. I'm just gonna go ahead and sift in the remaining sugar. Smash all these powdered sugar clumps down in there. All right, so this is the point where the marshmallows, the fondant is pretty stiff. It's not really stirring very easily, so I can go ahead and turn this out onto the table to get it the rest of the way kneaded together. I pretty much have a ball of dough, but it doesn't have all the sugar in there and it's still a little bit tacky. I put gloves on just to keep um, the fondant from sticking to me too much. And you also want to use some vegetable shortening on the table. That'll keep the fondant from sticking to the table. Also some on your hands. If you have one of these stiff uh, like bowl scrapers, use those to get all the fondant out of your bowl. When we do fondant at our shop, we do it in a big industrial mixer, like a big 30-quart mixer with a, uh, with a big dough hook. And um, that sa saves our arms quite a bit, allows us to make it more, um, more volume, bigger batches in less time. If you're making it at home, I'd recommend definitely doing it this way on the table by hand uh, with your elbow grease. Uh, that way, a lot of mixers, KitchenAid mixers, uh, stand mixers just can't handle how stiff this is. It's even stiffer than like a bread dough or a pizza dough. So we just don't recommend making fondant with your stand mixer. It's just too stiff and we don't want to be responsible for recommending that if your mixer breaks. <laughs> so use your arm muscles, a little bit of elbow grease, and we'll get it done. So I pretty much have a ball of dough, but it needs to be kneaded a little bit smoother. So like you would knead bread dough using sort of the ball of your hand. Get the rest of that sugar kneaded in there. At this point you can, um, depending on humidity or how much water you added, um, I feel like mine needs a little bit more sugar. It's a ball of dough pretty much, but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty soft and still kind of liquidy. Uh, what I want to do is shake in some more sugar. I'd rather have the fondant be a little stiffer um, versus too soft. A little bit stiffer, I can always knead in some vegetable shortening later on, or I can add a teeny bit water, some water drops just to make it softer. Um, so to start with, we're gonna make it a little stiffer. And you still wanna sift it, so I've got a cup in here. I'm just gonna sift it through and I'll add a little bit at a time until I get the right stiffness that I want. You should end up with a ball of dough. It'll still be soft because it's warm from melting the marshmallows, but you don't want it to be too tacky. You want it to be um, a nice ball of dough that sort of holds its shape even though it's a little bit warm. So you end up with a ball that sort of holds its shape, is less liquidy and it doesn't spread out over the table, holds its shape really nicely. So this is not ready to use. Our buttercreams are more ready to use as soon as you make them. The fondant has to set overnight. It's still a little warm because you microwaved the marshmallows. But other than that, I think also the gelatin needs to set overnight. And so if you make this the night before or a couple days before, you can even make it a week in advance. Uh, but what you wanna do is keep it from drying out. So what we do is wrap this in plastic wrap, but first you wanna sort of coat it 
liberally. Coat it with the vegetable shortening that sort of seals in the moisture and then wrap this in plastic wrap and then you could put it in a Ziploc bag and then you could put it in a Tupperware container. <laughs> Mainly fondant doesn't go bad, it just dries out. So you wanna just keep it away from the air. Um, so do everything you can to wrap it airtight, let it sit overnight or at least 24 hours and then you can be ready to use it. And after that point, it will have, um, it will be harder and it will have set and it'll be stiffer. And if it's not ready to use, what you'll wanna do is microwave it for a few seconds. That'll soften it up. Uh, microwave it just long enough until it's ready to knead, until you can get it moving again. Um, and that's the point where you can start rolling it out and using it and making your decorations or covering your cake. So we make a marshmallow fondant, so it actually tastes really good. It tastes like a big marshmallow covering your cake. Uh, fondant gets kind of a bad rap in general for not tasting very good, so we, that's why we do it out of marshmallows. Um, we want you to actually be able to eat your cake and not have to peel off the outside. So this tastes as good as it looks on custom cakes. Um, it's a little bit of elbow grease and muscle to get it made, but it's definitely worth it. So that's how you make our marshmallow fondant. I hope you give it a try. Definitely make a mess of your kitchen at home. Uh, it's definitely worth it. If you like our video, feel free to like and subscribe. We have new ones coming out every week.